friends, and welcome to my desktop. My name is Crystal, and in today's video, I am going to show you how I begin the process of planning one of my travel albums, and specifically one of the travel albums that I'm making as a gift for somebody else, uh, documenting a trip that I was not on. So today, we are going to begin working on an album that I'm creating for my mom. This one is a trip that she and my dad and her family took to Montana back in 2019. I have an uncle who lives there, so they went to go and visit him. So I will be using the Explore More kit from Feed Your Craft to help me plan out this album and to help me actually put this album together. So I am going to screen share with you today, and I also have a small little box where you'll be able to see me as well, so I can help to show you the process that I go through through when I'm working on a project like this. And also I should um, caveat that and just say that I am working inside of a traveler's notebook. So I'm creating a traveler's notebook for this trip. And I will be using the uh, Explore More kit in various ways, both digitally and physically, in order to make that happen. So let's go ahead and switch you guys over so you can see my screen and then we'll get to planning this album out. All right, you guys, let's do it. Hi friends, so now you can see me here. I am sitting down at my desk, so my computer is above my uh, webcam here. So when I'm looking up, you will see like my chin, but that is okay. Um, so what I wanted to show you here before I actually get into any of the computer stuff is that I am working in a uh, traveler's notebook that I purchased from Felicity Jane. Now, one of the very first things I do when I go to plan out an album like this is to figure out how many spreads specifically for this album I have to work in because that's going to help me determine the uh, pages for different products and how many photos and all of that kind of stuff. So what I did is I took account of the spreads. I do not count the front page and I do not count the back page. I just want to know how many full page double sided spreads I've got. In this album or traveler's notebook there are 15 total. So then there is also the title page, which I will do something with, but I'm not going to use this as a main page for documenting the stories. And then I also have an ending page, and this is typically where I put um, just a recap on the trip as a whole. So we'll create a card to put here that just has some areas to fill in, and the front will just be a title. Everything else in the middle, I plan to use product and photos to tell the stories from this trip. So that I wanted to say. The other thing is when I am planning my kits digitally and I also have the physical product, I actually keep it right here on my desk. So I've got all of my cards here that I can leaf through to try and figure out what I want to add uh, into these project folders to help me tell my stories. And then I also pull it up digitally because any, any of the physical product that I want to use, I'm also going to add into the digital folder so that I know precisely where everything goes and where it belongs. So let's go ahead and let me show you some of the computer stuff here. So on my screen, I have two, actually this is the wrong one. Let me pull up the right one here. <laughs> there we go. I have two, um, I have a split screen here with two different folders open. On the left side, I have all of the folders that I have created for each of the spreads in this book. So I start with the title page, which you can see right up here. And then I have spread number one, spread number two, spread number three, all the way to spread number 15, and then my ending page. So this is going to let me place my photos and my digital products into the folder so I know exactly what goes on this page or what goes on this page, right? It's just a way to help organize it and make everything a little bit more streamlined and easier. So that was step one for me. Then the next thing I needed to do was to download all of the photos. For this, I have, so I primarily use Shutterfly as my photo storage area. So like where I store my photos and where I organize my photos. And then what I will do is I will download my photos off of Shutterfly. And the reason I'm cool with this is because when you upload to Shutterfly and download, the resolution and the quality of the photo stays the same. So they, they upload in full resolution and then they download in full resolution. 
which is important to me when I want to, you know, blow some up and then make some small. It's just, you know, personal preference there. So I use photo, not Photoshop. I use Shutterfly. I'm also uh, working on, on setting up a second storage place and using Amazon, Amazon photos. So, but that's a work in progress. This has been my structure for the last three years. So inside of Shutterfly, you can go to your photos. So I have my photos. And then inside of my photos, you can have shared, shared folders, and then you can have your own folder. So there's all photos and then there's albums. So I always like to go with albums and then I have albums set up. This is a whole other, a whole other thing, but I have albums set up for like weeks and for events and for all of that kind of stuff from back from 2013 until now. But what I want to point out is that you can also share an album. So when I'm working on albums that are going to be for other people, I will typically set up a shared album for the two of us. Uh, in this case, I had my mom create the album and then she shared it with me. Once that happened, she could go ahead and upload her photos that she has to put in this album to that folder, and then I have full access to them where I can download them and use them myself. So we're working on this one right here, um, the 2019 Montana trip. In here, I have a total of 49 photos to work with. I could go through and just kind of figure out which ones I like the best. I ultimately decided to just go ahead and download all of them and then to organize them from here. So once I have them downloaded, let me see if I can pull everything back open and I'll actually go to my downloads because uh, I already did this, but I wanted to do it again to show you. Nope, I want downloads and it's gonna be this one, yep. So once I have them downloaded, I'm just going to copy the entire folder of photos and then stick them over in the same folder where all of my subfolders are. So now you can see my spreads one through technically 16 or zero through 16 because that's title and ending page. But then we also see all 49 pictures here as well. Um, some of these I happen to know are out of order because typically when you upload to Shutterfly, they upload in the order uh, that the photo was taken based on the date, but then also based on kind of the file name inside of your own device. Half of these photos were photos that my mom took herself. So she just uploaded them into the folder and they went in order of when she took them. But then a portion of them, maybe not half, maybe like a third of them, are photos that she received from my aunt. And uh, because those photos were sent to her and then uploaded, the dates didn't carry through or the timestamps. So those ones are a little bit out of order, but based on the scenery, I can sort of decipher which ones were from which portion of the original photos. So what I'm going to do now is to determine where these are going to go. So for instance, I know that they started their trip by going to Chicago and then going to a football game there. So I have this really awesome, let me see if I can blow this up because I'll, I'll do the photos first and then we'll go through the rest of the products and I'll make this a bit bigger as well. Whoa. Okay. Nope. Too big. Too big. We're just going to go with large icons. So <laughs> there's this photo that they have right here. I can open it up. That is like a night, um, a night photo of the city of Chicago. So I figured that that could be a really great way to start this album is a, is a Chicago photo. So I'm going to put that one in there. Um, and probably only that one, the title page, I'm going to use a stamp set to, to stamp the month or the month to stamp the state of Montana and give it a title and date stamp it. That's all my title page is going to be. So no photos necessary there. Then I figured that we could do another spread about Chicago. So I've got the uh, my mom and my dad in front of some of the city buildings. And then there's also um, this popcorn store that we always go to in Chicago whenever we're there. My mom took a picture of it. So I felt like those two could potentially go together in a spread. And then the last one that would be Chicago based would be this football game. So I'm just going to copy all of these photos, especially since there are four that are very similar. I'll probably only pick one of those photos. And then there's the, um, the stadium or the field where it says the Bears because they went to go see the Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions. So we'll put that into spread three. 
Okay, so now we get into a lot of snowy pictures. So most of these, based on what I can see here, were taken likely on the same day or maybe a day apart. But there is a little bit of a clear indication. You know, these ones look like sledding photos when I open them up. Yeah, they're definitely sledding photos. Um, they are grainy, so that tells me I probably won't blow them up. I will probably actually shrink them down in order to make that less apparent. So maybe we'll put all of these sledding photos into spread four and call that a day. Then we've got this really beautiful picture of the mountains that I thought could be its own thing. So let's just make that spread five. Um, and then we've got some like family photo shots in the woods or in the, in the, um, on their hike. So I've got, you know, some, this is my aunt or not my, this is my uncle and his wife and their son. Uh, so there's a few of them. And then we've got my parents together here and then there's some scenery. So I'm thinking let's do a spread of my uncle and his family. And then let's do a spread of my parents. Um, gosh, and then what from here? Honestly, I probably need to click over and see what I did from here, but we've got like this one, which is my uncle and his son together. And oops, it's not cooperating here. Let's just X out of that because there are two of them. Um, and then we've got more of what looks like the same scenery from here. So it's like pictures of scenery, pictures of them, and then pictures of scenery. So I might be able to split that into a couple of different ones. This looks like it's very likely the same day um, out in the out in the snow and then there's some more snowy pictures here and here and also when I clicked onto this one you can see that there's like the frozen waterfall behind them which looks the same as this waterfall so it's probably the same thing is where is what I'm thinking at this point so let me quickly go over into my finished just to remind myself what comes next because I don't remember right so scenery and then yes the one of them. Did I add the other? Whoops. Let's go back here. Where did I put? Um, oh, I just made it afterwards. Okay, so we've got my parents. We've got scenery, parents, all of them together. And then that one. And then that one. Okay, all right, let's go back so I can show you what I did here. So the next thing I did is I grabbed all of these scenery ones. So I like these three plus these three, which all seem to be the same. This one I might make different because um, there's this one with my dad next to it and that could be a really sweet full page photo. So I'm thinking I'll make that one a full page. So we've got spread number seven, which is going to be um, some kind of scenery and maybe I'll do a few small photos together. We'll see what I feel like at a, at a later point. Then I've got, um, I'm thinking let's do like the ones here where they're in front of the waterfall. And then I could potentially do the ones of them, you know, just the waterfall itself. Um, then I might do these photos of my uncle and his son. Um, trying to decide what I, where I think that one came from. That one and this one I think I put together here. I love this photo, even though it's kind of far and grainy, that's my grandpa. So it would be my grandpa and his grandson um, that I think is just super special and could stand alone. Um, let me go in and see again, where are we at? So we've got, okay, yes, 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 okay. <laughs> Not any of them, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so we have four, so we have four more spreads to go. So next I'm thinking I will do these ones of, um, of Jack. Oh, and maybe adding this one in there too. So this is all the um, all the men of the family. So we've got my grandpa, my uncle, my other uncle, and um, my uncle's son. So we'll add that in here with Jack with the other pictures of his son. I love this picture of my mom and my aunt. Oh, this one. Shoot. I wanted to do that one somewhere too. <laughs> and well, we'll get to this here in a second. So I'm thinking... What do I want to do here? Um, so I'm thinking I will add this picture. This is them sitting in the airport <laughs> waiting to go home. 
I think I'll just add that one into the ending page and see if I can maybe squeeze that in somewhere. I've also got a couple of pictures of them from a restaurant, so playing a video game together, and then my uncle and his wife. So these could go maybe in spread 15. Um, this one is really pretty cool. This is my, what my uncle does is he's a woodworker, so he finds these crazy, like, twisted juniper trees and then makes them into things. So he made this wall for this restaurant, and that's the significance of him standing there. So I think that should be its own thing. Um, I've got these pictures of the women doing some stuff. So we'll put that there. And then that leaves me with this one last photo here, which I'm thinking I'll add into the one of all the scenery. So I'll have them with all of the rest of that. I think that looks good. And then there's also this, which is a view of, it says Bozeman. And I thought that it's just really pretty where I could potentially cut off the um, Bozeman title or I could leave it there and then just make that its own thing. So this is, is likely, I kind of like the idea of adding this one to the very first photos of Bozeman of when they were there. That's where they used to live in Bozeman, Montana. They have since moved, but um, to another town in, in Montana. But um, that's where they visited when they went. So now we've got my photos separated into, you know, title, 15 spreads, and our ending page. So I'm not going to worry at this point about selecting specifically which photos, and I'm not going to worry about sizes right now. The next thing I want to do is to select product and where do I put it. So what I'm going to do is come over into my explore more file and I'm going to open up the cards, the digital cards. On the left side, I'm going to go spread by spread and we're going to figure out which cards are going to go best with which spreads. I did do this for about half of them already and I have those set aside in a pile so I can remember, but um, the rest of them we'll do together. So. Let's, I'll just show you as we go. So first I've got this um, title card that says discovery consists not in seeking new lands, but in seeing with new eyes. And this is not their first trip to either Chicago or Montana. They've gone, they've gone many times. So I really loved that quote and I felt like it resonated. So I'm going to come over to my file, select that card, copy it and then paste it into this. So I might possibly do some kind of full page deal with the full page photo and just make it a really big impact type of spread. And then I'll set that card to the side because now it's been used. Okay, so let's go back. Spread number two. For this one, I am choosing this happy to be here card. It's got yellow in it, which I love because this photo of the popcorn has some yellow in it. And I felt like that would go pretty nicely to go. Plus, you know, we they are happy to be there. So we're gonna copy that paste it into the file, and then move on. For spread number three, this one um, was the football game. And I had chosen this card here, which is this coral with red on top of it. And I liked this one because I felt like I could easily alter it to be bigger, excuse me, and give me some room to put um, smaller photos, maybe a collage of photos, and a spot for journaling, and maybe pair that with a large photo. I will say, let me just go ahead and copy that and paste that over there. I will say that when I am working on an album like this, I do like to come up with some kind of formula. So most likely, every single spread in this album is going to have a full page photo with a full page paper card, something that might have smaller photos on it, um, it might be a full page of text. It might be, um, you know, a blank spot for my mom to add her journaling to it. It might be, um, it could be anything. It might be a full page, like just title. Um, but I am planning for every page, if I can manage it, to have a full page photo because that makes the process of putting this together not only easier, but quicker. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one here is this sledding Bozeman, potentially the Bozeman picture. Um, and for this one, I had selected the other topographical map that is blue with green on top of it. 
I chose this because I felt like the blues of this card would pair very well with the snow in the pictures. Uh, snow tends to have a bluish tone to it, just period. So I felt like that would be a good complement to those photos. Then we're going to move on to spread number five. So this is the photo of my parents. And this one, I had chosen these two blue cards, the four by six cards, and then also a three by four card that is a fill in um, journaling that says amazing. So um, let me copy those over and then I'll tell you why I chose them. So the blue cards I chose because my dad is wearing blue. And again, snow has a bluish tone already. So I felt like those would be very complimentary for this um, page. Also, because I am using a digital card, I can change this to be a full page pattern, or I can change this to be a full page pattern. Um, it, it gives me a little bit more customization when it comes to creating my spreads. So I have those. And then I also really enjoyed or I really liked this amazing card. I felt like it would be really nice on top of the blue. The blue would help it to pop off. So you can kind of see it like this. Um, and then it just gives some area to fill some stuff in and then potentially put another photo if I like two of them and their facial expressions are different. Or, you know, I could do whatever I wanted to do really with that one. So that's why I chose those. Whoop. That's why I chose those. Uh, so let's move on to spread number seven. For this one, I also have um, these. So moving on to the next one, I'm actually going to switch around a couple of these photos. So um, first of all, I'm going to have these two. I'm going to take them out of here and put them into spread number nine. And then I'm going to take these two and we're going to move them into spread number seven. And then this one of all of them together and that's going to become its own thing. So I think that kind of corrects where I may have fudged up what I was doing. So um, we did spread number six, let's move on. So spread number seven is all of the scenery now. I love the idea of making this one big and then making a couple of the other ones smaller. I'm thinking of using, again, the same two blue cards, which I could always change the colors if I wanted to. Um, so we'll add those in. And then I also love this gray that says a truly unique experience because this is a kind of unique experience. At least it seems like it for me. Um, that we'll add in as well. And again, that gives me the blue tones and the gray tones, which are typical of snowy scenes. So I think that that will pair very nicely. For the next one, this one I have a picture of my mom and my dad and my uncle, and they are overlooking one of those like great big scenes. For this, I love the idea of using this Go See Do box card uh, because it pairs really well with what they're wearing, but then it also gives some direction on journaling. So like, where did they go? What did they see? What did they do? Um, so I think that that will be a nice touch for that album. And then for spread number nine, this one has a lot of those brighter colors. Um, we've got the blue from my dad. We've got the gray from my mom's hat. Uh, and my uncle, my uncle looks like he's wearing a blue, like, um, sweater as well. So for this one, I'm going to add in this card that says Wander, which has a very light blue tone to it. I think that that will be super pretty on this one. And I will definitely do a spread either where there is a full page photo um, on the side, and then maybe I'll turn the other one over, or I will um, have it go across the bottom of the spread and then maybe have this poking out where you can pull it out and look at it and then also I may add in this dark blue so that there's something behind them so I'm thinking those are the two cards that I will use over here okay so that is as far as I had gotten on my own before I decided to go ahead and film this so let's go through the rest of these together for spread number 10 what I will do for this one and there's a lot of green in these which is nice because I, I have lots of green cards remaining so for this one I'm thinking I will maybe I'll use this one that has a a sentiment on it that says no matter where you travel there is always something wonderfully new to be found that could be really awesome and then maybe I will also add in this tag card 
not necessarily to make as a pattern, but maybe I can cut some pieces apart to add onto the photo that will help to tie in the color of this card. So let's do both of those and we'll add those in. Okay, so now we've got that used. Spread number 11 is this one of my grandfather and my mom and then um, my cousin Jack. So what I'll do for this one, I think, is we're getting, we're getting down to the end of it. Um, thinking maybe I'll do this Let's Go Adventuring card, which is a three by four, and I'll just make it into a larger card. So we've got the Let's Go Adventuring. We'll put that one in here. And then we'll go from there. For spread number 12, we've got the full family here. So this one I will likely again do across the bottom, have something in the top. So maybe this out exploring highlights, because if that's poking out of the top, then um, that gives it a, some kind of a title. And then on the back side, I can have one of the photos of Jack. Um, and then we can add some something else potentially maybe another photo we'll see when we get to it so for now i'm just going to put in this highlights one for number 12. number 13 is definitely going to be a full page photo um and then maybe we'll do let's see here what do i want to do here we've got adventure log uh, this is definitely going to be the last page what else do I have? I have 13, 14, um, 15. End page. So end page is definitely going to be this one. It's a great card. It gives me a great setup where I can alter it and turn it into kind of a, an overview type of card. Um, okay, let's go back to these other three. So, or four. Is there four of them? No, three. These three other ones. So... I am thinking for spread number 13, you know, and also like, is there any repeats that I want to do? Do I want to repeat anything or do I want to just use what I've got? I've got three cards remaining. Um, do any of them lend themselves well to tags? Maybe this one could be kind of cool with tags. Um, this I like. Uh, okay, so let's go with this. This place makes me feel alive. We'll put here. Then let's go spread number 14. We'll do tags, um, which we can do from here. And then I also, there were the tags that came in the die cut set. And then the last one uh, says adventure log. So much to see, do, eat, discover. And they were, I guess they were eating here. So that kind of, that kind of goes. So we're going to go ahead and um, that is essentially how I'm going to divide everything out. So the next thing that I would do here is to go ahead and get my photos edited and cropped and printed. And then also to work on um, altering whatever pieces that I need from the digital kit in order to make them work for the traveler's notebook. So for example, I would click into you know, the different folders and say, okay, this one lends itself to having a full page photo of the city and then having this card altered into a full page journaling card. Or you know, the next one, I have a full page photo and then maybe I can do a flip up with the photo and the journaling card. Or maybe I do, you know, I pull out from my stash of travel collection things, some additional cards that I can use. Or um, maybe it's putting two smaller photos. Maybe it's altering altering everything to make them squares in on the page. You know, just trying to come up with a design concept that lets me use as many of the photos as I can, especially if they're good photos, and uh, also lets me tell the story. For this project, I am not going to be adding any journaling, so I'm just going to provide space for journaling, um, whether that's blank space or lines or anything like that. Sometimes I do it that way. Sometimes I provide a questionnaire 
and have the recipient fill that all out and send it back to me. And then I type it up and I add it into the journal so that the journaling is already done. But for the purpose of time constraints, I'm not going to do that this time. And I'll just let my mom fill in her journaling by hand after she receives this album. So I'm not actually going to film the photo editing and cropping process, mostly because it's repetitive and that will get boring really fast. So um, that's what I'm going to do next here though. And then in the consecutive videos for this album, what I'm going to do is work on a couple pages each time. So if there are you know, 16, let's say there are 16 total, then that might be four videos of four spreads each is likely what you'll see come from this. Um, in those videos, if I alter anything digitally, I will try to include what I, what I did, like how I am altering the stuff so that you can repeat it if it's something that you want to do. Um, otherwise, we'll be over at my desk just putting everything together. So, I hope that this has been helpful for you to see kind of the back end of how I get started with these albums, especially when I didn't go on this trip. Um, so it's just, you know, documenting a trip that I wasn't on. So, and in that case, it's, you know, like I said earlier, either trying to get some journaling um, from them or just giving them space to add it themselves. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I hope that this has been helpful and um, I'm very excited to get started in this album and to work with this product. So, you know, definitely excited for that. All right, friends. So until next time, until, you know, whenever, whenever the next video comes out, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye, friends.